Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Some of you have asked me, how is it that I have a tank full of notorious killers and yet it's so mellow? And I started giving it some thought and I've come up with five reasons why this tank behind me full of aggressive predator uh, African cichlids is actually pretty mellow and peaceful. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so reason number one, zero tolerance. And by that, what I mean is whenever I'd have a fish over the last two years that was obviously a jerk, a fish that would uh, select out another fish uh, for elimination and constantly harass that fish, I would uh, immediately remove from the tank. Uh, put in isolation, maybe if I really liked the fish a lot, like, like happened with a few of them, I'd try them one more time, but, but if they proved to me that they were truly jerks, they were out. And I would give them away, take them to the local fish store, and be done with them. So there was a, a sort of culling process over a two-year period. That could be expensive, uh, it can be uh, a little, little, little disheartening, a little bit heartbreaking, because sometimes you really like the fish, it's a beautiful fish. In my case, a couple of them were very, very pretty, but I had to make the choice that I want a, fit, a tank that would uh, give me a sense of relaxation or a tank that was always stressing me out and so they were out, okay? Point number two, point number two, these fish are well fed and for a long time when I had African cichlids, I was uh, feeding them very much on the light side because I was so concerned about, uh, about that, that, that horrible bloat that you hear about so much, the Malawi bloat. And I really didn't want them to, to, to get that. And, I, and uh, I've had one or two fish over the years that have gotten a little bit of it. And uh, it, they, don't, they don't survive it usually. Usually you can't bring them back once, once that starts. And so I was so afraid of it that I, w I, I was, I believe now in hindsight, I was underfeeding. And so this was like feeding lightly and also having a day where I wouldn't feed them at all and things like that. And so I've, I've pretty much cut that out and, and what I do now is I, is I give them a pretty hefty portion of food that ensures that everyone was able to get to it and was able to eat and, and, on, and one day a week I give them a special treat like frozen krill, something like that, that, uh, uh, that really gives them a little bit of variety and, and really sort of expands the, uh, the nutrition. I also give them a variety of food and it's pretty high quality food, including foods like, like Sarah, Extreme, right? Uh, you know, foods that, that, that are known for um, Pisces energetics, uh, very good quality, clean protein. So I think that's really helping as well. Uh, point number, number three, point number three is, is uh, room. And I know this isn't possible for a lot of you that would like to keep African cichlids, uh, only because of the limitations of space that you might have, but uh, uh, room, giving them room. These fish were previously in a uh, six foot across, 210 gallon tank, and, and things started to really mellow out there. I didn't really have a lot of problems in that tank. And now when I brought them over to, the, uh, to this 300 gallon behind me, that's seven feet across, they continue to be very, very mellow, and I've been able to add new fish without any problems whatsoever. So uh, definitely having, having room, uh, room to swim around in, that has made a, a, very, a very big difference. Uh, point number four is, uh, nothing nothing to claim, no territory to claim. Uh, th this tank is uh, relatively decor free compared to a lot of the tanks you see out there, right? Uh, it doesn't have, you know, castles and ships. And uh, <laughs> I took the SpongeBob out of it. And uh, it, 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 so it, it's a very simple, simple uh, landscape, <laughs> very simple uh, uh, you know, decor uh, setup with, with only one plant just to give it a little bit of variety for something to swim around occasionally. But for the most part, there is nothing in this tank that a fish can claim and, and, uh, and, and, and defend and, and really uh, you know, make it their own. So there's nothing like that in this tank. It's pretty, pretty much just, just open swim space. And I think that has also made a difference. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, and, and point number five, and certainly these are in no real, real order. Uh, they're, they're all, I think, of equal importance. But point num number five is I don't have any of the fish that are, uh, that are known for being uh, wacko, for being a, built, a bit crazy. I, I don't have any hybrids, 
no, um, you know, there's no dragon bloods. I had dragon bloods and I had to get rid of them. Uh, I don't have OBs. If I try OBs again, it'll be in a group of maybe four or five of them uh, so they can keep each other uh, occupied but leave the other fish alone. I've heard that that might work and I'm willing to try it. So uh, watch for that in the future. I might just add five OBs and see what happens. Uh, but there's, there's no hybrids in there. There's no OBs. There's no females. There no, there's no, um, none of the fish that are notoriously um, uh, territorial, right? Like, like your, um, your otter points, you know, fish, fish that, that are known uh, for being uh, extremely um, uh, territorial. So I've eliminated those fish and, and uh, they're not part of my collection. And it's an all male tank. So there's, there's nothing uh, going on where, where one of them uh, may want to go into a breeding type uh, behavior. They still dig pits like cichlids always do, perhaps in the hope that a female might, <laughs> might come strolling along, but there's, it's an all male tank. And as a result, what I have now is uh, because of those points, and maybe there's a few more that I haven't thought of. If I do think of them, I'll, I'll let you know in, uh, maybe on a Saturday live stream during the cichlids and coffee live stream. Those are, that's at 11 a.m. on Saturdays and that's 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, uh, cichlids and coffee live stream. We talk about this, we talk about a whole bunch of stuff uh, from filtration to fish to food to everything. And uh, if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Uh, we're, we're, we're closing in on 50,000 subscribers and that's very, very exciting. For those of you who'd like to support the channel further, consider becoming a, a part of the Garage Gang and become a Patreon monthly supporter. Starts for as little as $3 a month. The details are in the description. All right, so those are my five reasons why uh, I think this tank behind me is, is pretty mellow. If you can think of, uh, if you have any ideas, any theories uh, or anything that has worked for you in calming down your African cichlid tank, share it in the comments below. We all learn from each other on this channel. Thank you, my friends, for tuning in, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.